Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 2 of Redstone with Ripper and today's going to be a much shorter episode for you guys, nothing like the 20 minute episode we had uh, the first episode which is not going to happen every episode, I promise, I'm going to keep them nice and short and uh, today's episode we're going to be going over another fairly simple concept of delay and with this we're also going to be going over the very, very common monostable circuit. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So delay in its simplest form basically is delaying a signal. So basically all the setups we have here, except the first one of course, cause delay. So if we hit the first one, we'll hit the button, we can see our output in this redstone lamp. And you can see that the redstone lamp turns on when we turn the button on and turns off when the button goes off as you can see here. However, when we add delay in, such as this um, train of repeaters, we can see it goes on after the button gets pressed because of this delay, it delays the input and it also actually delays the output. So you can see when the button goes off, the repeaters go off, um, the, the, the lamp goes off a, fair, a couple of ticks after the button does, uh, four ticks to be exact. Um, I've actually increased these repeaters to all four ticks in delay, making for a total of 16 ticks of delay. And that's a very, very long delay in this context. And if we hit the button, we can see the lamp doesn't even turn on before the button turns off. So the button is off there and the lamp hasn't even turned on yet. And it stays on for 16 ticks as well. So it's a very, very useful contraption. Oh, actually, it doesn't stay on for 16 ticks. It stays on for um, four ticks. Sorry, I should mention. But it turns off uh, with a delay of 16 ticks uh, after this one would if you press both the buttons at the same time. So it's a pretty simple concept. It's not the most complica complex concept. Um, a couple of other ways you can create delay are here. Uh, comparators are the same delay as repeaters uh, when they're set to the one setting, so they're actually one tick of delay. Um, I think the only difference in comparators is they will not carry through a one tick signal. Um, which we, uh, I'll get to one tick signals. Uh, I think that's the only difference, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they patched the bug where comparators were a slightly different delay than repeaters. So these are all set to one again, and you can see they're exactly the same. So they all provide a one, one tick of delay. Uh, the last main way of produ providing delay is torches. Um, these provide exactly one tick of delay. It takes exactly one tick for a torch. Uh, for a torch, for a torch to turn off, or a, for a torch to turn on. So it's ex actually one tick. So one, two, three, four. This will be exactly the same delay as both of these. So as you can see, you can see they all turn on in exactly four ticks at the same time. So those are the main four ways of providing delay. Uh, this is not an exhausted list. There are plenty of other ways. You can even use uh, stuff like hoppers, droppers, pistons, and stuff like that. Uh, but these are the main four ways you will find, uh, especially, mostly the repeaters though. So I'll move on to our next section. So this next section is to kind of quickly illustrate some of the differences in delay with repeaters. So in this line, we have one, two, three, four ticks of delay, four repeaters set to one. In here, we have one, two, three, four times four, which is 16 ticks of delay. Four here, 16 here, so that's the 12 difference, I guess. Um, but the main thing I want you to see is that this one will turn on much, much longer, or much quicker than this one, should I say, and, and this one will turn off much quicker than this one as well. And as you can see, that's clearly the case here. Uh, the next one is um, kind of compressing repeaters in circuits. So we can see one, two, three, four ticks of delay here, and we see nothing, 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 four here. So Theoretically, they should have the same delay. As you can see, they turn on and off at exactly the same time. So I just thought that was really cool how you can get four repeaters into uh, one repeater there. So it's basically just a thing to point out. You may as well use this because you're saving redstone and you're saving space. So there you go. Uh, however, you may notice that when we hit this, you see they stay on for exactly the same time. So even though this one activates 12 ticks later, they still stay on activated for the exact same time. Um, and that actual time is the amount of time the button is activated. 
So how do we, if we want something, say we want this lamp to turn on earlier and then this lamp to turn on and then for them both to turn off, off at the same time, for example, um, that's a genuine concern and it's what we use a monostable circuit for, which we will cover right now. So what you see in front of you here is basically a very, very bare bones uh, monostable circuit. And I'm talking very bare bones, like I, I've expanded this right out just so you can get a good look at it. Uh, basically what a monostable circuit is, uh, it basically stands for one stability, um, I guess if, if you really want to go into it. Um, it's basically a circuit that has one stable output, as you can probably deduce. Um, and basically you can see that this is the stable output. In this case, it stays on unless you hit the button, in which case this one will turn on and then before ref reverting back to this one. Um, if you really, really want to be pedantic, uh, I guess you could say a button is a monostable circuit because its stability is off. It's That's its stable output. And when you press it, it'll go on for 10 ticks and then turn off back to its stable output. So if you really want to be pedantic, uh, even torches, they're monostable circuits, I guess. Um, but when you refer to monostable circuits in redstone builds generally, it's a circuit that will allow you to keep um, any circuit on. In this case, we're using our output as the uh, the redstone lamp. Um, it enables us to activate that redstone lamp for as long or as short a time as we desire. So that's basically the, the purpose of them. Um, here we have one, two, three, four times four, 16 ticks of delay in repeaters. Um, it may be 17 ticks. I think it's 17 ticks because of the extra torch there, but we will call it 16 ticks. And basically what I want you to watch for is that the, the lamp will turn on. Basically, it will, it will turn on two, one, two ticks after the button is pressed, but it will only turn off 16 ticks after the button deactivates. So we'll have a look. So you can see the lamp went on almost instantly after the button was pressed. It's two ticks after, which is very, very quick. But you can see it stayed on a lot longer than the button was pressed. So we'll do it again. So you can see it stays on much, much longer than when the button is pressed. And that's because of this line in here. Um, if we were to remove these and, and uh, put a... I'll grab one of these. No, I want to grab a button. <laughs> if we were to put a button here... It would actually, and take out this, it would actually form a set reset uh, latch or an RS NOR um, latch. Uh, we'll get, I'll go into those, I think, next episode probably. Um, but the uh, it's basically, a monostable is basically, if you can build an RS NOR latch, you can build a monostable circuit. All you need to do is put these repeaters or this delay in the middle. So I've showed you lengthening the output uh, of a pulse, uh, of a circuit. What if we set all of these to one delay each? That means it will turn on almost instantly, but it will turn off after four ticks. So that will not stay on very long at all, theoretically. And we'll test it out. And you can see that, well, you can see the redstone torch and the redstone lamp just, well, the redstone torch just flashes on. You can see it all, it barely stays on at all. And that's what these monostable circuits are generally used for. Generally, they'll be used to shorten a pulse. Um, not too many uses where they're used to lengthen a pulse. Um, mostly used to shorten. So one more time. And that's basically your monostable circuit, um, you know, in general. All right, guys. So now I've shown you the real bare bones monostable circuit in an expanded form. I want to show you a couple of monostable circuits that you would actually use that are actually applicable to kind of redstone builds. Uh, my first one here is a real, real classic one. And it's, um, well, I've been using, I did use this for years. I don't anymore. Uh, this actual setup used to provide a one tick pulse. I don't think it does anymore, but it still functions very well as a mono stable. We'll hit the button. And you can see the redstone lamp stays on for quite a short time. Uh, looking at it from the side, we can see when you press the button, the redstone torch will turn off, which makes this turn on. And then this repeater comes through and turns it off again, as we can see here. I'll just get a good angle for you. So you can see this redstone torch barely stays on for any time at all. Which is pretty cool, so that's my first one. My second little design here is a piston based one, which I actually use a lot now. It's probably my main go-to one for uh, T flip-flop designs mostly. Um, if you don't know what that is, we will get to that in the course of the series. So basically what's going to go on here? 
we got two repeaters. We got the button going into two repeaters. Um, what will happen first is the power will go to this repeater and pass the power through the block to this redstone dust. One tick later, this repeater will power our piston. And then once this is powered, it means this block is no longer in this spot. So power can no longer pass through and therefore the redstone line will turn off, deactivating our device. So we'll see it in action, as you can see. And you can see the redstone dust light up for a split second. So the advantage of these designs, if we grab a sticky piston and put them on the back side of these blocks, we'll put that there, that there. So if we activate this, we can see the sticky piston activate, but it pushes and pulls the block back, which is normal behavior for a sticky piston. But when you activate this one, look what happens to the sticky piston. It will actually leave its block out, which actually creates a T flip flop effect, as you can see here. So that's the main advantage of this design over this design and most redstone based ones, um, because for some reason, uh, a redstone update uh, actually broke this one. This one actually used to have the same behavior as this one, but it doesn't any longer. Uh, which is a bit of a disappointment because it means you have to use pistons all the time now. But um, we'll move on to my final monostable design now. So to finish off the video here, I thought I'd include a monostable design that came with the redstone update 1.5, of course. And that is the hopper dropper um, uh, monostable design. And we have the dropper pointing into the hopper and the hopper pointing back into the dropper. So when you activate the dropper, it will fire an item into the hopper, but the hopper will instantly pass it back, as we can see here. And we can see it's, it's a lot longer delay than uh, either of these ones, but it's actually very useful for when you want to compact designs. It's extremely useful in our compact redstone devices. So we can see, obviously, comparative output there. And that's all there is to it. So that's it for this video, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video on delay and monostable circuits. Um, as you can see, the redstone is getting, you know, more and more advanced with each episode. Of course, we're going to start a bit basic, but I guarantee you we'll get through to more complicated designs by the end. Uh, one thing I want to mention quickly here is actually in the first episode, I was informed that apparently stone and wooden buttons are actually different. Yeah, they are. So uh, wooden buttons actually stay activated for longer than stone buttons. So there you go. I was wrong. Uh, you guys corrected me, so thank you very much for that. So make sure you know wooden buttons actually stay activated longer than stone buttons. So there you go, guys. Um, the last thing I have to say is make sure you check out the world download if you want to see any of these designs up close and personal. And apart from that, be sure to leave a like. Be sure to send uh, to share this with your friends if they want to get into redstone and yeah apart from that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you later guys